What's up guys, welcome back to In The Shop TV. As promised, we are back to work today on my 1955 Chevy truck project, and I am really excited about today's video. So this is gonna be the first of a three video series sponsored by Tanks Inc. Now in today's video, which is gonna be part one, we're focusing on all the tank components, meaning the pump, the sender, the fuel fill, all that good stuff. If you go online and start reading about LS swaps, man, it gets really confusing. There's tons of information about fuel systems, how to plumb them, what kind of pumps you should use, what kind of pumps you shouldn't use. So my goal of this video is to simplify this and make it as stupid simple as possible for anyone else who might be installing an LS in their build. We're gonna jump right into this, but before we get started, I wanna give a super huge thanks to Tank Sink for sponsoring this video. Also, if you guys are new to this channel, please like, comment, subscribe. I'm trying as hard as I can to grow this channel and I need all the help I can get. And the best way you can help this channel is by just hitting that like button. It tells YouTube that we're doing a good job and it promotes the video. All right, so we're here at the back of the truck at the tank, and what we've got from Tanks Inc., we've got their GPA2 pump assembly. We've got a genuine Walbro fuel pump. We've got a pair of zip ties, gaskets and screws. This is the filler neck that we're gonna be using in cap. We've got the sock for our pump, our sender float, and the sender itself. So in not any particular order, I think we're gonna start with the pump first. Well, the instructions are very well written, very simple and easy to follow, and you even get a diagram here that shows everything. So the first thing they want us to do is measure the depth of our tank where our fuel pump's gonna go by sticking a tape measure or ruler in there. And then we're gonna add 1 8 of an inch to that total depth to compensate for the gasket. So our depth is exactly seven and a quarter. We're gonna add 1 8 to that for our gasket. So we've got our pump out here. It's a genuine Walbro pump, which is really a super nice thing about this kit. I'm glad to see that. Made in USA part. We're gonna go ahead and take our filter shock and get that put on the bottom so we can measure the total length of our pump. Take our little protective cap off here. The sock is a little bit of a firm fit, so don't get discouraged when you go to put these on. If it's a little bit snug and you can't seem to get it seated, just get it started and then go ahead and give it a good slap and it'll pop right on. Another thing is you want to pay attention to the internal baffling in the tank and any type of internal components that are in there. And you want to orientate your sock so that it's not impeding on anything in there or in the way. Okay, so we've got the supply tube cut to length. I'm going to go ahead and cut the return to length now. So I went ahead and cut that on the bevel. The instructions say they want you to cut it exactly one inch shy of the bottom of the sock. And I believe the reason for cutting it an inch short of the bottom is just that you don't have excess noise when the fuel is pouring out of there back into the tank. I think this is just for noise or for some sound isolation, but you want to kind of put it on now because obviously once you connect these lines, you're not going to be able to get that in place. There we go. This tubing is really rigid plastic, so you want to just kind of soften it just a tiny bit by applying some heat to the end of this so it can slip over this covered part of the pump. Remember to make sure that you got your hose clamp put in place before you start trying to squeeze that pump onto there because like I said, it's gonna be a really tight fit and then uh, you don't wanna take it off and have to put that back on in place afterwards. All right, so I stopped kind of squeezing and pushing it on there. We're right where we need to be at 738, so I'm gonna call it quits right there and get this clamp tightened up. All right, so next we're gonna take the included zip ties and go ahead, they want you to kind of secure this return line down to the pump body. Um, I've heard some people say that they want to use thicker or more robust zip ties but i gotta tell you i mean even if i didn't zip tie it this is really pretty stout it's not going anywhere um I, th these are going to be just fine it's just to keep this from moving around don't have to go crazy tight just snug them up all right i'm gonna go ahead and trim these off so before we continue on i just want to say that holding this in my hand i mean you could tell guys when you hold something in your hand you can just you feel how solid it is and how heavy it is. And this is a really well-made product. And uh, I gotta give the props to Tank Sink on this. Really good stuff. All right, so moving on to electric connection. It's kind of idiot proof. It only goes in one way. You can kind of see where the clip is right there. So that is the way it goes in. But before we snap that in, they give you these kind of th through bulkhead fittings right here, where you're gonna slip the wire through and then tighten down on these little ferrules or compression nuts or whatever they are. That'll hold the wire securely in place and not allow any leaks. All right, so I've got these all the way pulled through, but I want to leave just a little bit of slack. I don't want to yank them all the way through and then, you know, put strain on these wires. Now we're going to go ahead and tighten down on these nuts. I'm 
I'm not gonna go gorilla tight on that. Just snug. All right, so next I'm gonna go ahead and slip our gasket on carefully over the sock. Slide that up into place. So I'm gonna go ahead and use just a little bit of this PermaShield gasket dressing. Um, it's fuel resistant. You don't wanna to go too thick with this stuff, just a thin, thin layer, just wipe it on there. And um, this was my idea, and then I actually opened the instructions up here, and it, it recommends that you do the same thing for a better seal. It also recommends that you dab a little bit on the screws when you go ahead and install it, and even though it does have an O-ring on there, I think I'm gonna take that advice and just get a little bit on the threads. <laughs> and got two screws started just so when I clocked my holes I don't want it to move around by just putting one in and tighten it down. If you just do one it'll and you tighten it it'll turn the whole thing and you lose your holes so just get two in the first one in loosely and then you can tighten this one down and um, if you have a hard time lining up your holes because the gasket kind of slips around in there just use it all once you get it in place and just poke it down through the holes and it'll self-center and line everything up for you. Just a quick little tip for lining up holes in the gasket. When you order your sender, something to note is that you have to make sure that you kind of know what gauges you're going to go with before you order your sender and install it because ohms matter, right? So you got to match up the resistance of whatever gauges you're going to use and order the appropriate sender for your gauges. All right, so moving on to the sender instructions, the first thing they want you to do is take note of your tank depth, which again for us is seven and a quarter. So this applies to us for tank depths of six inches to 15 and a half inches. It'll be necessary to remove the lower mounting bracket, which is this part here of the sender. By removing the two screws and nuts from the lower mounting bracket, these will be discarded. And that seems simple enough. All right, so both pieces are separated. Basically, I can see what's going on here is they want you to remove them. They want you to do the next step, which is to remove this plastic rheostat housing and then reinstall it onto the bracket that has a sender on it itself, since we have a shorter tank. Now it says to hold on to these screws because we're gonna reuse them when we install it on the upper bracket. Careful not to lose the little washer on there. All right, so to determine how high you wanna mount this up, they want you to measure, again, the tank. It might be a little bit different there because the tank's angled on the bottom. So we're gonna take a measurement from that part of the tank where the sender sits, and then we're gonna add 1 8 again because we gotta compensate for our gasket. Um, but then what we're going to do is we're going to take that measurement and divide it in half. And we're going to measure from here to the center of where this rheostat screw is. So it's actually a bit shallower here, to my surprise. We're at six and three quarters exactly. Actually, I'm stupid. It makes perfect sense because this area is recessed a good three quarters of an inch. So that explains why it's more shallow. We should have just over three and three eighths, which we do by one sixteenth, which is exactly what we need. All right, so this next step's kind of important and um, a little bit difficult to explain, but you need to take note of how your float arm is going to sit inside the tank. For us, we have baffles that run this way that hold that make kind of like a tray for this pump. So where our sender is going to be installed, we have empty space crosswise the tank this way. So our float's gonna have to be installed somewhat like this, okay? So then you need to pay attention to where your screw holes are and where they correspond with the screw holes on the tank. So we need to be clocked that way, which means that when we install our float arm, we gotta install it from this side. And I don't know if you guys can see that, if it's coming through on camera, but it's clearly marked right there, float side. So it has to come out on this side. So we're gonna unscrew the temporary arm they have in here. Just loosen that screw up a little bit. Pull that sucker out. Remember, the float side, so this goes this way. Now, to get the exact height that we need, what we basically wanna do is measure one eighth below this flange to the top of the ball. So I think what I'm gonna do is use our discarded bracket here, which is about an eighth, give or take. 
Go ahead and take a measurement here. Six and three quarters exactly. So the next thing that we're gonna to need to do is, as you can tell, me just holding this upside down, the floats hanging up top, which is not correct. It's showing that we would be full right now and there's no buoyancy at all because there's no fuel here in midair. So they want you to cut this off right at the bottom, which will, this is kind of acting as a counterweight, which is pulling that up. So theoretically, when we cut this rod off right here, that should fall to the empty position. All right, so once we turn this upside down, theoretically, yep, we fall right to the empty position. So our sender is now completed. We gotta go ahead and get our gasket on here. Well, all right, so a little bump in the road here. Since this is so short, um, I can't get it in. I can't get it close enough to this bar to clear that little hole. All right, so plan B, I unscrewed the rheostat, got that in there, and slipped this back down in place where I have it marked, and we'll tighten it up. There's no problems, guys, only solutions. All right, so the sender is installed. I did the same thing, put some goop on each screw, tighten that down in a clockwise pattern. So I don't know if you guys caught what I did right there, but that rheostat that slips onto the upper bracket, it's held on with those screws that kind of screw into the plastic part of the rheostat. Well, I just unscrewed it, dropped the rheostat with the float into the tank, and then brought the upper bracket and the sender down and pulled the rheostat up and then re-secured it. Now I marked the bracket where the rheostat mounts so that I would have the same exact height we wouldn't get screwed up there. But as luck would have it, where that screw goes through it and mounts the rheostat to the upper bracket, it bottoms out right on the cross part of that rheostat, so it couldn't go up any further anyway. So it worked out kind of perfectly, just that it's, it's exactly where it needs to be when you tighten down on it um, to have the exact same full and empty readings that we measured out with our tape measure. So last but not least, we have our fill neck with billet cap that we're gonna install. I kind of struggled a little bit on what I wanted to do here. I thought I initially wanted to do um, like a push through cap, um, but I decided to go with this. It has a longer neck, which I like. So just having that little bit of added height would be um, kind of beneficial, I think, to filling up the tank, not having to bend over all the way. And the main reason obviously is because when you have that additional height from the filler neck and you have your gas nozzle going in, you know, if it's if your flush mount is right here and you, your nozzle's all the way down there, the pump's gonna shut off while you're filling way, like, way before you're full. So. Having this little bit of additional height would be pretty helpful. A really nice solid billet cap. We got a rubber O-ring in there so you don't get any fuel loss. Just a quick check to make sure our holes line up, which they do. there with the sender for a second but just this is something that rheostat and then putting it back together once the float was in the tank it's made a world of difference piece of cake all these components from tank sync i gotta tell you are really really nice quality i'm really pleased with them i guess it helps having a tank ink tank also um, makes installation a lot easier all the screw holes lined up everything was perfect i really can't say enough good things about them or the product but it's complete fuel systems it's not just tanks and pumps and senders i mean they got hoses and fittings and accessories and everything you can think of it's a really really complete source for all things fuel related for your build so a big thanks again to Tank Sync for sponsoring this video. We have two more videos in this series. We're gonna get it wired up next. We gotta get it plumbed. Guys, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.